Hello, I'm John Clothier and welcome to my workshop. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I made this really simple and easy to make uh, drum sanding thickness jig for my lathe. So to kick this project off, I have cut out a whole load of bits of plywood and they're mostly 12 mil, but there's a couple of bits of 18 mil as well. Don't think the width really makes any difference. They're five inches by five inches, and I need to glue them all together into one big block. But before I do that, I want to make a recess for this big nut. This is an M33 nut, and this will screw on to my lathe. Now it's the depth of two pieces of this wood. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole that's about the same size as the flats, which is about 50 mil, and then I'll use the chisel to cut out the bits to make the shape, epoxy this in, and then hopefully get all this lot glued up. So that's the nut glued on and the epoxy has been left to cure for maybe an hour. It's five minute epoxy, so it's not completely set. Hopefully it will do that overnight, but it's certainly good enough for now. It's not gonna go anywhere. I've left it proud a little bit and that's because when it screws onto the lathe, there's no need for it to go, the wood to go all the way up. Um, it just gives it a little bit of flexibility. I will clean this up a little bit when it's properly dried. This piece has got the hole in it and it's so that when it sits on the back, there's a bit of space for the thread on the head, on the headstock of the lathe to poke through. So now all I need to do is to glue all these bits of wood together, clamp it up and leave it overnight. Right, let's leave that until tomorrow. Right, so it's the next day, and as you can see, I've removed the clamps and I've attached it to the lathe. It's a little bit wonky, so I'm not gonna end up with quite as big a diameter drum as I was hoping for, but that's okay. I've got the tailstock holding it up for support. It's rotating freely. I need to drill a hole in that end for the support for when it's gonna be used, but I wanna true it up first just to kind of make it a little bit more, more in balance, I'm just gonna stand a less chance of it wandering around as I drill the hole. Once that's done, I will true it up again. So that's it, rough turned, and it is only very roughly turned. It's not out of balance anymore, and it's a little bit more stable so I can get the speed up, etc., etc. So I'm gonna have a go at drilling with a force and a bit into the end of it. The reason is I want to use this. This is the, uh, it's a revolving arbor, it's got a bearing on it, and this is what I use with my uh, sphere cups or cup arbors or cup chucks or whatever you wanna call them. I ideally want to use this at that end to support it. So it's got a two morse taper for the live, uh, for the tailstock. It should sit in there. I I think this might move around too much. So I'm gonna start and see how I get on, but if it starts moving around too much, it's just not gonna work. It's gonna to be too sloppy an end. 
and I'll have to look for another method. But let's give it a shot and see what happens. Right, so that's that installed now. Uh, you may have noticed that I ran some uh, super glue, uh, some CA glue around the inside of it first. Wasn't to secure this, it wasn't to um, glue this in. It can be removed, although it will be a bit of a nightmare. It might end up breaking the wood. It was in there to provide a bit of strength. It suits into the glue, uh, into the wood, sorry, and just provide a bit of strength for the bearings on this to rotate or to grip, to help grip, and just to provide a bit of strength for, from lateral movement. So when I want to use it, obviously I've screw it on that end, put it in, bring up the tail stock, that just slides over, lock it all in place, just nip that up just to provide a bit of pressure that way, lock that in place so that the tail stock doesn't move about, and now that is pretty much secured. So all that's left to do now is just to true this um, up just a little bit, not too much um, with at all, and then I'll get onto the next stage and we'll come back to this and we will finish its truing up with the sandpaper. So now I'm going to make the table that's going to rest underneath the drum. And that's going to be made out of 18mm MDF. MDF may not be quite the best material for this because obviously it's not the strongest. However, it is really flat. So I'm going to see how it goes. And if I do have any problems with it, then I'll look into modifying that in the future. So I need to make two pieces so that I can end up forming a shape that's a bit like this. As luck would have it, the sheet that I have is the width of it is two feet, which is perfect. So what I need to do is to mark out or measure out this distance, which I've already done, and it is 20 inches. I need to cut two of those, but this is where the really important bit comes in. I also need a strip of wood that goes in between the bedways. So I need to measure that, but I need to measure that very accurately. So that's measuring 49.73, and I've done that and measured that in three places. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it to 50 millimeters, which should be just a bit tight, and then just sand it until it fits nice and smooth. So let's go and get those three bits of wood cut out over on the table saw. So I cut the two boards. Um, I forgot to press record on the camera when I was cutting them, but it was just cutting a piece of MDF on a table saw. I did remember to press the record button for this piece though. So this one's been cut to roughly the same length, it's maybe half a mil longer, doesn't matter. This has been sized and sanded to fit in the bedways of the lathe and there's no horizontal movement, it's nice and straight. I've also run some CA glue along both of the edges, and this is the low viscosity stuff, just so that it can soak in a little bit, just provide a little bit of extra support, I hope. So what I need to do now is to fix this to the bottom of one of these panels. So I wanna put it in the middle. Um, so I think the first thing to do is to mark out where the horizontal mid, uh, middle is, 61 centimeters. So if I go to 30 centimeters or 30 and a half, I'll be close enough. In fact, I might even use this tool and this is a really accurate um, tool from Incra. And yeah, I can mark out to 30 millimeters and, sorry, 300 millimeters, and just run that along with a pencil and get a nice horizontal line. So I don't actually need the middle. What I need is the middle, less half of this. Doesn't need to be accurate, I don't think. It's just to kind of get it roughly in the right place. So I know that half of this is 25 millimeters. And so if we said 270, 275, that's gonna be close enough. Right, so with the line drawn, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this and nail it as well. So get some glue on the bottom and then I'll stick it down to so that it, it touches up to the line. What's important is to make sure that it's exactly equal from this edge, this distance. So it doesn't need to be exactly square. So I'll get it glued, few nails in it, just to hold it in place while the glue sets overnight.
Okay, so now that that piece is attached, I'm gonna turn my attention to the height adjuster. And for that, I'm using this long coach bolt. Hopefully you can see that, okay? Now, it wasn't quite threaded enough when I got it. The thread only came to about here, so I've actually used a die to increase the thread. Um, I'm not sure what the length of this is. Let's give it a quick measure. It is 180 millimeters. So what I'm gonna be using this for is I'm gonna have that attached to the bottom piece and it will press up onto the other piece of wood on the top. You'll see it in a minute, but hopefully you'll get the idea. I'm gonna use this threaded insert. Um, this is, by the way, this is an M10 bolt. And this threaded insert is going to be, have a hole drilled in here and screw it in. So I'm gonna do that now, and I'm gonna do it into this piece that I've just attached. Two reasons. Number one um, is that it's right gonna be, it's gonna be right underneath where the drum is going to be rotating and it's doing its sanding. To me, this means that it's also gonna offer a nice amount of support for the MDF. Second reason is because it makes it easy to get to but it also keeps it out of the way underneath the lathe. I might need to use two of these. So I'm gonna do the one in the middle to start with, and if it feels like it's not got enough support, what I'll do is I'll add another couple either end. Oh, and just to add, the reason I'm going for coach bolts is because they've got this rounded top to them. So as the other piece of wood sits on and it pushes up, it's not gonna matter, it's gonna sort of keep the angle. Right, I'm gonna put it in the middle, roughly. Again, it doesn't need to be too accurate. So around 10 inches, somewhere around there. And we know this is 50 millimeters across, so at 200, uh, sorry, at 25 millimeters, and that gives me my center. Just mark out a starting point. Get the drill. So I've got a little bit of break out of the bottom, but that's fine, I can live with that. It's not like anything is gonna be visible once the other piece is on. So let's get this attached. Now this should just screw in. Right, so just added a little bit of low viscosity super glue around it all again, having threaded it. Hopefully this will just add a bit of support for it. Um, and also, say, stiffen up the MDF around that area. Let's see if I can get it back in. Right, it's so just flipping it over. I'm just gonna test to make sure that that goes in okay, which it does. Does feel a little wobbly though. I'm not sure if that's gonna present a problem later on. Okay, so I fixed the bolt wobble. Um, as you can see now, it's, it's very solid, very, very straightforward. All I've done is on the back, just put a big washer and a wing nut. And what I'll do is I loosen the wing nut off, adjust the depth with the bolt, and then just lock it in place. Right, so now I need to attach the other piece of wood. So to attach the next piece, I've brought it over to the lathe. It makes it a nice stable platform, um, easy to work with, and also gives you an opportunity to test out the fit. And yeah, it's pretty good. You also notice that I've removed the bolt. Again, it's just to make it easier to work with for the moment. So now I need to attach this piece. So just for the moment, I'm gonna place it on the top. What I need to do is to make sure that this piece is attached to this dead flat across here, dead square across this edge. At every step of the way, I've used the same edge to square everything up, which should mean that everything ends up square. If it's not square, when it meets the drum, it's gonna be a bit of an angle, which means it's not gonna cut levelly, or sand levelly. So with this here, I'm gonna clamp it, bring over a couple of hinges and screw them onto here. So that's all clamped up nice and square, and it's not gonna go anywhere, say because it's got all the clamps holding it on. Now I've got these hinges, and I've only got two. I'm not sure if I'll need more at the moment, but these are quite solid, nice and sturdy. So all I'm gonna need to do is just attach them, one here and one here, and hopefully that will work. 
So I'm going to line it up as best as I can across the centre. Drill a pilot hole. Let's just take, let's take a couple of screws. And gently, I want to make sure I don't wreck the wood or oh, MDF. Let's do the other one as well. Okay, so that's got that one in place. I'm now going to put the other one on and then once I know that they're in the right, correct locations, I'll put all six of the screws on each hinge. Right, so with all the clamps removed, I can see I've got a nice hinged piece. So let's put the bolt back in. Okay, so that's the main part of it now built and constructed. The bolt's back in and what I need to do now is true up the drum. The way I'm going to do that is with this piece of AC grit sandpaper that is glued down to here. This will ensure that the two faces, this and this, are parallel with each other. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the lathe spinning and start sanding process. Time for some ear defenders, dust extraction, and probably a lot of fine tuning. So now that this drum is nicely smooth and it is level compared to this surface here, which is what I need, I need to put some sandpaper on it. Now there's an amazing video that's been done by Susan Gardner and I'm going to provide a link to that below where she talks about the mathematics of how you measure this and work out how to cut the sandpaper out of a roll and, and then to obviously better attach it to this. Now I'm not going to go into the detail. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this. This is the piece of sandpaper that I've cut using Susie's method. Now, I'll be honest, it's not exactly using Susie's method. Um, hers was very precise. I was very rough in my calculations. And when I have put this up against the wood, just to quickly test it out, it's not perfect. However, it's good enough for what I think is necessary for this project. Um, I don't think it's imperative you have exact coverage all the way along. In fact, if anything, I think a little bit of gap might help with removing some of the sawdust. So anyway, let's get this attached and give it a try. So to start with, um, I've just marked a little hole in here and you can see we've got a, a cut edge and that's gonna wrap around the drum. And as we get round to the other side, you can see that it just starts to fall around and then it just works its way along. So let's get that screwed in place first. And yes, I am gonna use screws for this. I've seen several videos where people have used other, other methods, uh, clamps and what have you. Um, I don't intend to be sanding anything that is that shallow, um, where the screw's likely to get in the way. I also don't intend to sand anything that close to the edge. So I don't see that it will be a problem. Now I'm gonna try and hold that as tight and square to that edge as I can, wrap it around and you can see straight away that's where I've rounded it up and I've ended up with a gap but I'm sure that that is fine. Just wrap it around the lathe, not around the lathe, around the drum. I'm holding it pretty tight and I have gone off the edge and I think this is because I didn't get the angle quite right for here. So it has ended up with a little bit long. But again, I don't see that that is a problem. Another screw the other side. Now when I'm changing the sandpaper in the future, I will try and reuse the holes so that they don't end up getting holes all over the place. But of course the beauty of this is that if this drum does get knackered out, all I need to do is knock up another one, I've still got the flat bed for it to rest on. Okay, so um, what other things can I talk to you about? Well, what I did discover, find as well while I was uh, truing this up 
is I could benefit with another couple of hinges on the front here, which is what I've done. Just provides a little bit more stability. Also up underneath, I put in two more of the bolts, one either side. They're just there, just again, to stop it from rocking side to side a little bit while it's in use. That's only really gonna be necessary with wide pieces of wood. With a narrow piece of wood through the middle, it's gonna be absolutely fine. So, let's test it out. So I've got this piece of beech, and what I'll be doing is I'll be feeding it this way up through it, just to know that I have set my lathe to run in reverse, because otherwise what will happen is it will catch on it and it will pull it forward and shoot it out the other end. With it rotating towards me, I have got a lot more control as I go up through, but you'll see that. So what I need to do now is I need to adjust the height, so that's just by adjusting the middle, the middle bolt until it just starts to catch. There we go, it's just starting to move it. Fraction more, there we go. And that's where it needs to be so that it can um, do its job and sand. Now, I haven't built a dust collector for it. What I will be doing is just using the end of my dust extraction for now. Perhaps in the future, there might be a future upgrade for this project, but let's try it out and see how it works. So as I said, lathe is set to running backwards. It's running at about 800 revs. Um, I'll switch it on, get some dust protection on and try it out. Okay, so there we go. That is a really nice finish. Now this is uh, 80 grit sandpaper. I went for that because I fully expect to have to sand by hand afterwards, but I think once the 80 grit's done its job, which is the thickness in the removal of the bolt material, um, it's quite easy to sand that 120 and keep it quite flat. So um, yeah, that's a really, really nice finish, but even if it is 80 grit, can't really see any sanding marks on it. Um, but then, I don't know, maybe that's just because of the way it's, it works. I'm not sure, um, but I'm really pleased with that. Anyway, as I said, this is a very easy, very simple, um, very quick uh, lathe attachment uh, for turning your lathe into a drum sander. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you find this useful. Um, let me know in the comments below if you'd do anything different or if there's any improvements you think I can make. So I know there's the obvious of the dust extraction. Um, but if there's anything else, let me know. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye for now.